tonight on Colonial Sports Center. The heat rises on the Colonials football team as they face BMI. Can they rise to the occasion? And the women's volleyball team looks to toss spikes in the way of the Mountaineers. And we go in the field. Todd Lewis, and not quite Matt Felice. No, not even close. So unleash the big guns, because guess what? We are going raptor hunting as CSE starts right now. Salutations. Welcome to Colonial Sports Center alongside Kelly. Kelly? Wow, this. I'm a lead anchor and I don't get an escort. Oh, I guess I I guess I should have run. Why you smile, why I'm Kelly Burke and tonight we start off with some tense moments involving the future of the CHA. Yes, sir, in a move that was both stunning yet quietly expected. Wayne State University announced that it is ending its men's hockey program effective at the end of the season. The decision, made for financial and logistical reasons, jeopardizes the future of the College Hockey America Conference and all of the teams within it. More on the situation and options for Robert Morris and the rest of the CHA in a moment. But first, the official statement from Wayne State. The official statement was released last Wednesday. Wayne State Athletic Director Rob Fournier explained the university's decision to drop their ice hockey program saying, anytime you eliminate a program, it is a very difficult move. We exhausted every possible option before taking this step. The reality of the economics of the state of Michigan, the educational imperatives of the university, and the need to manage our resources effectively led to this difficult decision. Importantly, however, the educational objectives of the men's hockey student athletes will be protected. And for more on the future of RMU as it relates to this decision, we return to CSE's Dan Yost. The morning, Zach Reeksley uh, just got nixed, but as soon as I was going to cross in Iowa, I was going to have, uh, have someone fill me in for the second hey, half. Hey, that huh? Backhand shot, scored by Wayne State. And talk about ruining the party like that. They go back on loose puck. Hey, Wonderful hey. move. Wonderful yeah. shot. <laughs> that's gonna count. Yes, it will. That's number 10, Tom Boucher back over to Higgins. Higgins gonna second round. Open net. Shot score by Wayne State. And that is number 27, John Grayback with a third goal. Whole entire two minutes is played down here. Good action working the puck. Two minutes continuously either. Not even broken up. Yeah, working it around. Good tape to tape pass in there. And a uh, bunch of shots. Just good shot blocking. Another shot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That goes in. Beautiful shot and score. We apologize, that was obviously not Dan Yost reporting on the situation, but Dan Yost and Gary Smith calling the game. There are several options immediately available for Robert Morris, two of them mentioned by Dr. Coleman in an interview that hopefully we will get a chance to show you. One would be a simple move to the Atlantic Hockey Conference, possibly with conference mate Niagara to make Atlantic Hockey a 12-team conference. The CHA could convince a couple teams to join them, perhaps teams like Mercyhurst or Canisius. The Hockey East Conference is a distant possibility considering most of those teams are located in Massachusetts and the New England area. The final option is to become an independent for a year or two until new teams are added to Division I hockey. The women's ice hockey team defeated the Brampton Junior Thunder Friday night 4-2 for their first exhibition game of the season. Tuesday night, they opened up the regular season as they hosted number two ranked Mercyhurst at the Clearview Arena. Lifetime, the Colonials were 0-10 against the Lakers heading into game one. First period, Valerie Chouinard looking to put Mercyhurst up early, but Brianne McLaughlin comes up big with the save. Jesse Scanzano sets up Shawinard once again, but again McLaughlin was able to get a stick on it for the deflection. Mercyhurst continues to battle in front of the net. They think they score. Let's take another look at that. Slow it down. Off the post, still scoreless. 
Lakers' Megan Augusta finds the shoulder of Brianne McLaughlin, but she'll go on to score two later on. Jordan Riley to her sister Jessica, who finds Kylie Rosler in front of the net, and she's unable to finish. Sarah O'Malley comes in strong late in the first period, but Laura Hosler is there. Second period would be all Lakers as Jackie Jarrell sinks her first of the season to go up 2-0. They finish with one more in the third as Mercy Hurst recorded a 3-0 victory. I think for our first collegiate game, especially with a, a bunch of new freshmen, we played hard, we played well. Uh, you know, we stayed in the game and we had a few breakdowns, obviously. You're going to see that at the start of the year and they capitalized on them. I'm glad that we're playing top teams. It's only going to make us better, help improve us. And, you know, someday we're going to be the top team that teams are wishing to play. So I think it's, it's we're moving in the right direction. Well, I think the fact that uh, we need to have a little bit more poise when we're on the power play. We get an opportunity. We can't get so excited and, and riled up. But we also, at the same time, need to make sure that we're working hard to retrieve pucks. And, and getting into spaces that are going to allow us to be successful. If we don't want to work hard, if their three work outworks our five, you know, they're going to kill the penalty off. So we need to stick with that mantra, but then also have some poise when we get it. It's officially hockey season, but we didn't forget about the football team. Stay tuned for a recap of last weekend's game. We apologize for the technical difficulties earlier in the show. Once again, with more on the CHA and Wayne State situation, here's CSE's Dan Yost. Announcing last week that their men's ice hockey program will dissolve at the end of the season, the future of the College Hockey America Conference, which Robert Morris is a member, is in doubt. By only having four teams left in the CHA, the conference will lose their automatic berth in the NCAA tournament, which is the most important thing the CHA can offer its member institutions. But this move by Wayne State doesn't come as a complete surprise to RMU Athletic Director Craig Coleman. We ha had some awareness that Wayne State uh, was in some trouble in terms of its general university financing and its appropriation from the state of Michigan. So this did not come as a complete surprise to us. Because Robert Morris was anticipating such a move, Dr. Coleman has already been working on a solution for the Colonials an opportunity to align ourselves either with an expanded and reformulated uh, CHA conference or with another conference. So we're looking at all of our, uh, all of our uh, possible options and we're in very intense discussions with a lot of folks and, and I'm confident that we'll, uh, we'll end up in, a, in, a, in at least as good if not better position than where we started. However, the Atlantic Hockey Conference, where many people predict the Colonials could end up, has already said they are not looking to expand. Dr. Coleman believes that there may be more to that statement than meets the eye. I think it still is an option. I think that one of the things that has been bandied about by a number of folks uh, in the uh, community is what, perhaps not a strict expansion of Atlantic Hockey, but perhaps some sort of affiliation between CHA and Atlantic Hockey or a merger between those two conferences in some, in some format. In the meantime, Colonials coach Derek Schooley has been having to reassure a team with an uncertain future while preparing for a season that begins next week. I have great faith in our, our leadership of our university. I have great faith in the leadership of college hockey. And, um, you know, I, I think we could be in a, a very good situation when this all shakes out. Another issue that arises from the uncertain future of the CHA is the effect on recruiting, which is important to a club that will lose 14 players after the season. You know, I just I keep telling kids and, and recruits, hey, I have, I have no, uh, no doubt this is going to be worked out. Whether they listen to me or not, 
is a, a different story. But, you know, could it affect recruiting? Yes, it could. But the question being tossed around campus, should the Robert Morris fans fear losing their men's ice hockey club like other CHA teams might? Absolutely not. We, we have a, made a major commitment to our, uh, our men's and women's ice hockey programs. The future of the team seems safe for now, even if no one knows where that future is. The team prepares to begin its 2007-2008 campaign this Sunday at home against Ryerson. For Colonial Sports Center, I'm Dan Yost. Thank you, Dan. Colonial Sports Center rolls on now, moving off campus for a bit to take a look at the local scene. And who better to start with than the most exciting team on ice? Tomorrow night, the Pittsburgh Penguins will kick off their season against the Carolina Hurricanes. The Penguins are predicting nothing but success this season after improving 47 points from 2005 to 2006. ESPN stated the Pens will live up all the hype, and gambling websites have already predicted a Stanley Cup for Pittsburgh by a favor of 8-1. to one. Puck drops at the RBC Center at 7.05. And here's a look at what else is coming up for the Penguins. The Penguins will be in Pittsburgh this upcoming Saturday and Wednesday before heading to Toronto the 13th and then they will be back for two more games at the Mellon Arena against the Devils and the Hurricanes. Well one phrase to sum up the Pirates this year, Ugh. another losing season makes the running total 15, one behind the all-time record. They'll enter the 2008 season though with some new faces as President Frank Coonley hired Cleveland Indians Assistant General Manager Neil Huntington as the new GM for the Pirates. Huntington has yet to make any personnel moves, but a new manager and coaching staff is likely on the shopping list, and players like Jack Wilson, Solomon Torres, and even Jason Bay might be on the trading block as Huntington looks to revamp the organization. Sunday, the Steelers are hoping to redeem themselves against the Seahawks after a tough loss against the Cardinals this past weekend. During the game, both Troy Polamalu and Casey Hampton left the game with injuries but are expected to be back this weekend. However, Bryant McFadden suffered a strained right ankle and is unlikely to be ready for Sunday. Both Pittsburgh and Seattle are entering the game at 3-1. Here's a look at some of the highlights from the Steeler game this weekend. 14 to 21 loss to Arizona as Pittsburgh goes to 3 and 1 on the year. Santana Holmes had 6 rece receptions for 128 yards and 2 touchdowns. Well, it's safe to say Kelly, it was a bad week for local football fans. Unfortunately, all the local colleges except for Duquesne lost this past weekend and the Steelers didn't help matters at all. No, and the Colonials, unfortunately, part of that group. And it's safe to say that the Robert Morris football team would like a mulligan for, their f for facing a full scholarship opponent for the first time in the 14-year history of the program. The Colonials, unfortunately, laid an egg against Virginia Military Institute. And for more explanation, we go back out to Joe Walton Stadium to take a look at the highlights. First half, no score, cadets driving and throwing. Surprisingly, Hughes, the surprise deep ball to Branson, Practically uncovered, he was 3 of 6 on the day. Two touchdowns, VMI up early on. 13-0 VMI now. Colonials look to answer. Ryan Listrup, the big guy, rumbling for a 31-yard gain. RMU finally looking good, perhaps getting some offense going. And Swolinski to Mario Hines inside the 15. Unfortunately, you know the kind of day it is when Hines has just two catches for 18 yards on the day. Colonials settle for a Michael Walzer field goal, 26 yards out. It is 13-3 in favor of the Cadets. RMU with another chance. Miles Russ, you can see why they love this kid. 57 yards, avoids several tackles, and can't quite break it. Finally pushed out of bounds around the 29-yard line. Unfortunately for Robert Morris, it all turns sour. Slinsky can't handle the snap, tries to pull a Tony Romo, and pulls the wrong version. Ball is stripped, VMI football, and of course, they turn it into points. Hughes off to the races on the quarterback draw, and they're not gonna catch him. No, sir. Tohi Bacanola with a nice effort towards the end, but 71 yards for Hughes, 138 on the day for the QB VMI up 20 to, 30, 20 to 3 second half. More of the same. Tim Mapray out on the pitch. Can't quite hold on to it eventually. Recovered by Tohi Bacanola, and the Colonials have life in the second half. Solinsky with a lot of time in the pocket, nice protection, steps up and finally finds Alvin Hill in the end zone. 
for a one-step, two-step touchdown, and it is 20 to 13 BMI. But the Kedets flip this one back open. Howard Abagesa, 28 of his 159 yards right here. VMI had three players with 100 plus yards rushing. Then Hughes, the final dagger, insult to injury. The deep ball to Mr. Branson, his second touchdown, 28 yard TD. VMI would win 40 to 13. Take a look at some of the final stats from the game. This was the first full scholarship loss by Robert Morris. Man, I mean, when you lose, you don't want to lose like the like you did the second time. So it's just, I had to say experience. Um, and, but you, we have fighters. We have guys that don't want to don't want to quit and won't quit. So um, basically, for the most part, it's just experience, man. Experience. Uh, for the most part, um, we played pretty well. I know it's going to be tough to say that after the stats and everything. A um, couple mental breakdowns here and there. Uh, a couple blown coverages. Um, but we're a young team. Or we're uh, getting better and uh, you know our, our biggest hope as a coaching staff is that we continue to you know get better and progress uh, the way our, you know we we feel we have a very talented young group of guys well despite the loss Robert Morris remains atop the Northeast Conference Wagner is second with a chance to move into first versus RMU this weekend Monmouth slips to zero and four the victim of a tough schedule while St. Francis continues to struggle in the NEC. Preseason conference champion pick Albany sits at 1-3 after facing some of the toughest teams in all of FCS football. CSC is taking over the world, or at, well, at least the soccer field. Our Todd Lewis goes in the field to work with Colonials goalie Matt Felice. You don't want to miss this. Well, it looks like the women's volleyball team is still in a bit of a fog since coming back from a tournament in Maryland. The Colonials lost two straight at, at the Maryland Eastern Shore Tourney and faced West Virginia last night at the Sewell Center. The, the Colonials 10-6 on the season, facing the 9-7 Lady Mountaineers. To the Sewell Center we go. WVU won the first game. We pick it up in game two. We can do that because we have editing equipment. Colonials in all white. Amanda Graham, she's good. It's 28-5 in favor of Robert Morris. Colonial still serving, and after a nice volley, Graham again has a chance here, and boom goes the dynamite. Colonial is looking to steal this game away from the Mountaineers, and another serve, and guess who comes up yet again? It's once again Amanda Graham just inside the line. Colonials have a chance to steal it, but WVU serving now. Elena Gibson kickstarts Army's response, but Cassie Lee's shot goes just a bit outside, maybe. Mighty close right there, tied at 29, long volley. Finally, a Jennifer Stambaugh shot. It goes off the fingertips. It eventually trickles out in favor of Robert Morris. WVU finally serving again, game point. And unfortunately for Bobby Moe, the rejection has them feeling so low. A 33-31 thriller. WVU does go on to sweep the match 3-0. The RMU men's soccer team has been off to a pretty successful start so far this season, but just how easy is it? CSC sent aspiring athlete Todd Lewis out to see what it takes to make the team and to get some tips from one of the Colonial's top players. We here at Colonial Sports Center felt like we needed to bring the audience, you, closer to the game. In order to do so, I'm here with starting goalkeeper Matt Felice of the Robert Morris Colonials. And he's going to run me through some drills today on what it takes to be a goaltender. What's your favorite part about being a goaltender? 
Uh, there's two parts. One, I get to watch the whole game. No one gets to see the, the game the way I get to see it. And two, obviously denying a goal scoring opportunity. So we'll just practice a little bit of catching right now. Oh. Okay, these are going to come a little bit harder. Ha. Tell me more. Get tired of your man, man. That's all it is. Get tired of your man. Okay. Get tired on your man, man. Get tired on your man. So it's kind of like a guessing game. So a little bit. So I mean, I'm good at guessing on answers and tests and stuff okay. like that. So you think I, I'll be good at that? Yeah, because uh, there's only really three possible ways they can go. They can go left, they can go right, or they'll stay in the middle. So it's like A, B, C. There you go. A, B, C. Ah, I guessed B! Oh, no! <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> I was at that one. Not really. Ah, oh, just three seconds off, kind of. Ah, nah, man. Good shot. That hurt. Oh, All right, now that Matt took some shots on me, I'm not going to lie, I was pretty scared. It was pretty fast, probably going about 193.7 miles per hour on me. So uh, I'm going to try to give him some chin music and Shoot some goals on him. You ready? You in my head? It's like a it's like a brick wall right here. Brick wall. Yep, hit it right to you. Going right. Yep, went straight at him again. So, I'm not wearing my soccer shoes, that's why. Okay, we're going. Oh, go with the foot off the shoe. The shoe off the foot. We're gonna try again. Sorry. Man, you're, you're good. You're good. You're everywhere. You're like a tiger. Rawr. Oh, I put it there again. I broke my toe on that one, I think. It's all right. Boom! Boom! He chose the answer wrong on the test. Woo! Pele! Pele! Pele. Pele taught me that. Well, that's about all the time we have for today. Matt, I'd like to thank you for uh, coming out and teaching me some of those drills. No problem. Now, do you think I have what it takes to try out next season? Yeah, you uh, definitely should next year. You hear it? From the man himself. Well, uh, that about concludes uh, our day today. Uh, I'm Todd Lewis in the field. Now back to Colonial Sports Center. All right, from football to joining us. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. What the hell is this? How you doing? Oh. Unbelievable. Lead anchor. No Western. Unbelievable. Thanks very much. Yeah, he's not dead. It's good to be the king. Joining us now to talk football is our very own Bill Romango. And Bill, why don't you take us and uh, have a few questions for you, Mr. Homecoming King nominee. As a Nominee. potential future member of royalty, we need some insight into some affairs of state. Sounds good to me. Amy. Mainly the state of this Colonials football team. Our first uh. question, Mr. Romango. Eric Solinsky never seemed to get on the same page with his receivers all day long on Saturday against VMI. How much of that was due to the VMI defense and how much of that was just having an off day? Uh, I think a lot of it was Eric just having an off day. Uh, the VMI defense, uh, one of the poorest defenses in the country is in terms of uh, defending against the pass. Just Swinsky just couldn't get through his progressions. He, he had time, but just once again, he just couldn't get through what he was trying to do and uh, unable to find open receivers when they were there. All right, thanks, Bill. Unfortunately, we are going to have to cut you short. We are running a little All short right. on time. It was uh, good seeing you guys. We tried to show this uh, segment last week, but technology hates us. So once again, fans had the chance to ask Coach Joe Walton some rather interesting questions. Take a look.
Coach Joe Walton, my name is Nazari. If you weren't coaching football, what sport would you be coaching? Oh, that's a good question, Nazari. I, uh, when I was young, I, I, I loved uh, baseball. I still am a big time baseball fan. I'm a big fan of the Pirates and disappointed like everybody else, but uh, I think I might have tried baseball. Hey, Coach, it's Brian. What's your uh, pregame meal before the big game on Saturday? Uh, Brian, uh, I eat right with the players. Uh, we usually have uh, uh, eggs and bacon and, uh, uh, you know, a normal breakfast, uh, uh, sometimes pancakes. Now, I, I kind of watch the pancakes, though. Hey, Coach, it's Lauren. I saw you driving around on that golf cart before the game. How fast can you get it to go? Well, I, I, I'm getting to the age where, Lauren, I, 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 can't, I can't drive it too fast. But uh, sometimes I'm in a hurry to get down there, so I go a little fast going down that hill. So, uh, uh, but uh, I, I guess uh, I can get it up there going pretty fast. Hey, Coach, this is Joe. When you wanted to start a football program, why did you choose Robert Morris? Uh, Joe, I'll tell you something. Uh, I, I kind of fell in love with the fact that uh, uh, I was close to home. I live in Beaver Falls. Uh, uh, I liked the school. Uh, I, I really liked uh, uh, Ed Nicholson, who was the president at the time. And uh, it, it seemed like uh, uh, a, a challenge that at my, this time in my life that uh, was important. And uh, it's turned out to be uh, one of the best things I've ever done. Hey, Coach. It's Cassie. I have a question for you. I was wondering how it feels to have an entire stadium named after you and what exactly you call it. Oh, Cassie, it's a, it's a big thrill. Uh, I'm very honored, and, uh, and I was surprised. Uh, uh, but, uh, no, I refer to it uh, as our stadium. It's, uh, it's uh, Robert Morris's stadium. Uh, there's a lot of teams that play on the field, and uh, so it's ours. It belongs to all of us. We're almost through here, and I'm just hours away of becoming queen. And we're just 60 seconds away from a new king of the ass hats. Stay tuned. Well, perhaps professional athletes should be applauded. I had to actually think for a bit to come up with an asshat for this week. Luckily, there's still enough asshattery to be recognized. And this week's award goes to United States women's soccer coach Greg Ryan. Prior to the semifinal match against Brazil in this year's World Cup, Ryan decided to start veteran goalie Brianna Scurry instead of normal starter Hope Solo. Ryan said that Scurry, who had not played in several matches and is 36 years old, had a better overall record against Brazil. Brazil won four to nothing. It's safe to say that while Mr. Ryan has avoided ass hattery off of the field, his actions prior to the match are baffling at best. ESPN soccer analyst Ju Julie Foudy, a Hall of Fame soccer player in anyone's book, was dead accurate when she questioned not the move, but the timing of it, and said that while the team may not have played better with Hope Solo in net, it's better to have gone into this game with full confidence in your netminder rather than have a, have a distraction. Mr. Ryan may not be an asshat for his actions off the field for once, but the, he sure is an asshat when it comes to coaching decisions. That's all the time we have for today. Along with AJ and Bill Romango, I'm Kelly Burke. Good night.
check, check, check. Good. Coach, maybe a little disappointed with ending in a tie, but uh, what can you take out of today's game? Not much. <laughs> it uh, was a difficult game. It uh, scrappy. It was not a nice game. It was an attractive game. Uh, both teams uh, were uh, most satisfied to play uh, a defensively oriented game. Uh, we created a couple of good chances, but they didn't go in for us. And uh, there was really lack of flow uh, to the game. So uh, the only thing that we can really do is uh, improve uh, an hour play, how we're going to play, and uh, kind of put this game uh, into the into the books. When you go into that next game, what are you looking to change? Well, against Cleveland, we need to find out. You know, this is first time we played against uh, formation 4-5-1. Most of the teams play either 3-4-3 or 4-4-2. And against this formation, and I hear that Cleveland is also playing sometimes 4-5-1 or 4-4-2. Against 4-4-2, you know, we match up a little bit better. Uh, so the big thing at uh, Cleveland is going to be artificial surface and uh, all depends what kind of formation they're going to uh, play against us. So we have to have, uh, kind of prepare for uh, two things, uh, playing on the artificial surface and uh, maybe different formation. Last question. Uh, large part of the game is the referees uh, were disappointed today with their calls. Well, you know, the, the, you know, a call, uh, you know, kind of, uh, you know, the way they see it. Okay, so uh, yes, I'm disappointed, but you know, again, I didn't see the game from their eyes. Okay, so uh, they have to do a job according to the way they see it. So, uh, you know, I'm not the only coach that ever is going to be disappointed with the referees uh, the way of the way they officiated, uh, but uh, they officiate uh, the way they see it. Okay, Good. Thank you very much. okay. thanks, Cleveland. Okay, thanks, thanks, coach. The Lady Colonials today ended up with a tie. Uh, <laughs> the Lady Colonials ended the game today with a tie. As they uh, go on to face Cleveland next week, uh, they're hoping to get a couple goals this time and win the game. Uh, from the North Athletic Complex. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> what are you doing? I lost time I got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The Lady Colonials ended the game today with a tie. As they go on to face Cleveland next week, they look to get a couple goals and win one for the Gipper. Scott farted. <laughs> After a long, excruciating... Like, hi, how'd you do? Did you like it? No. Alright. The late colonials ended in his screw. Ah, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> After an excruciating battle on the soccer field, the late colonials ended with a tie today. They go on next week to face Cleveland at home. On this grass. Um. That's all. I'm Todd Lewis. <laughs> North Athletic Complex. <laughs> The end. Back to you. Back, back to more Colonial Sports Center. <laughs> Beatbox. Why don't, you, wait, why don't you sing a song first? Okay. Um, this is your test. To, uh, oh my lord, we're gonna get sprayed. Let's go. <laughs>
Um, Zim. Yeah.